Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, Jeanette, also known as Misfit Vegan. And today, I'm really excited to be here. I have a bunch of lives, and my first one is with my good friend, Matt, from Raw Intuition. So, I'm sure he's gonna join us in a minute. What's up, guys? What's up, everyone? So, um, I got my cantaloupe juice, and I got my cantaloupe. What's up, Alex? You coming to Woodstock this year, boo? Because we, we could really use you on the team. Alex, you coming to Woodstock? What's up? So Matt is here, and before I let him in, I just want to let you guys know that you literally have 36, no, 35 hours left to get the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle. You can click the link in my bio or Matt's bio. Matt is Raw Intuition, and such a great name. What a great name. Um, 35 hours left to get the amazing Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle, which is courses. It's not just books, okay, because books are amazing, but there's also courses, manuals, programs to help you transition to a healthy vegan lifestyle. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. The top reasons that people go back to eating dead animal body parts and how to be vegan for life. And a big part of being vegan for life is being a healthy vegan. That's a big part of it, and Matt is gonna help us understand why. So let me get Matt in here. What's up, Alex? Okay, you're coming. Good, good, good. You go. You you know you're gonna be on Sugar Cane, right? I can't let you be on any other team, Alex. Fix my hair. I'll never know. Hey, Matt. What's up? Hey, what's up? What's up, Jeanette? Looking fresh. Looks like you I... just got out of the ocean or something. <laughs> I never know the camera too, so I gotta. <laughs> Um, yes, I did. I did just uh, get out of the ocean. It was so nice. It was so refreshing. So that's nice. Um, so how are you doing today, Matt? Fabulous. Uh, it's, you know, coming down to the last uh, few days of the bundle. So I'm just trying to soak it all in and, you know, get, get the word out there and hopefully spread uh, our amazing content like your six week course and, and my ebook and, and everybody else's brand new content to, uh, you know, build this community. Yeah, same. I mean, I'm guys, I know we're like coming at you with this bundle nonstop. But the reason why honestly, and I feel like I can speak for Matt as well on this is because it is our life it is part of our life purpose to help people get through and discover a healthier way of living and get through what they're dealing with. If you're dealing with health issues, we've been there. You know, I'm going to ask Matt a little bit of his story, but I know that for me personally, uh, I feel a responsibility to help people uh, discover this information. You know, it's, it's really, really like a hidden secret that you can just, you know, eat fruit and vegetables and do a few other things. Uh, and that is going to help you heal no matter what you're dealing with. So do you agree, Matt? 100%. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. If you would have told me that I feel as good as I feel today, 15 years ago, I would not have believed you, especially if you said I did it using eating just raw fruits and vegetables. I mean, I would have thought you were crazy. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's incredible when we start to eat in alignment with our natural design, you know, things just start working how they're supposed to work. And, and you know, I, I really, ha I wouldn't say that I've been sick for over a decade now. So it's been uh, quite the transformation from where I came from. The raw transformation. So now, um, <laughs> so, okay, so now we are going to, I wanna know a little bit about, for those of, for those of us watching that don't know your story, Matt, um, when did you, why did you go vegan? And then when did you go raw? Did you, were you an unhealthy vegan? Did you transition slowly? What is your raw intuition transformation story? Yeah, so I, I actually, so I'll back up all the way to the beginning. Um, you know, I grew up with a lot of health conditions, asthma, eczema, you know, constant cold sores or actually canker sores um, all you know in my in my gums and then you know colds and flus you know multiple times a year sore throats all the time um, you know just stuff like that and then as I got into my teenage years um, you know I started developing some toxic thinking self-critical thinking um, you know just not very you know very happy I would say I was depressed 
And it made it even worse when I got to the age of like 16 or 17 and I started to have some more hair falling off uh, when I would get ready in the morning. And so I was like really nervous about losing my hair. It was probably the scariest thing At that 16? I, yeah, yeah, wow. 16 or 17, right around there. Yeah, it was, uh, it was not something that I was looking forward to, uh, you know, losing my hair. So um, I jumped on the internet, started searching up ways to stop hair loss and prevent hair loss. And so I just, you know, obviously you go online, you're gonna see a bunch of high protein um, suggestions. So it told me to eat a bunch of beef, chicken, fish and eggs. Um, and then, but the good thing it did tell me was spinach. And so I started making these big spinach salads with, you know, chicken and cheese and ranch dressing and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it, it got me into the habit of making salads and just getting more vegetables into my diet. And I think that was a big, you know, a, a nice bridge to where it got me to where I am today. Um, and at 25 years old, I came across a radio program, which was talking about juicing and the benefits of juicing. And so that sparked my interest somehow. And I decided to do a, a juice fast and I went 10 days on just juice, uh, which I mean, to me back then it was crazy. And, and I'm just so glad that I actually followed my intuition and went through with it because it really led me to a place of, of you know, self actualization, self um, awareness, where I realized most of the things that I had believed I was doing in the name of health were wrong. And so, you know, my toxic thinking had really gotten much better after those 10 days. My energy was as high as it had ever been. Um, I was sleeping way better. My digestion was better. Um, so I, I came across so many benefits from just that. And that let me know that there's something about fruits and vegetables that I needed to know more about. And so that just kind of sparked me on this long journey of learning more about fruits and vegetables and, and really more about our anatomy and physiology and, and what we're really designed to eat. And, you know, over like a year's time, I really transitioned from, um, you know, how I was eating more into a fully, mostly raw diet. And so, um, yeah, I actually never got into because my my beginnings in this really started with like Dan McDonald and, and John Kohler and, and Dr. Robert Morse. And so I never really got caught in that uh, vegan processed food, uh, junk food type stuff. So I, I kind of skipped right over that and I went right into pretty much uh, a whole food plant based diet. And so yeah, I, I think I was fortunate in, in that sense that, um, you know, I, I just kind of learned how to to do it the right way pretty much from the beginning. Now, it did take me a while to really get it down and to learn it. Um, and I'm still learning it today. But um, yeah, that was that was really kind of how I got into this. And it's really just been, um, you know, an amazing experience the whole time. And I'm still learning stuff. Um, as you know, so it's, you never, you never finish learning, but um, you can definitely experience a lot of amazing benefits very early on. Wow, so much to unpack there. But honestly, Matt, I love, that's why I like you because you're humble and you know, like you can always trust people that know that they don't know everything and they'll never know everything and they're still learning. You know, I always trust all the mentors in my life that I love and all the people that I look up to. They always, like, they're humble and they admit the truth, which is we don't know everything. We're just sharing our journey, what has helped us, what has worked for us, what hasn't worked for us. And um, that's why I love your book, your new program. Honestly, guys, Matt's program, it's a 21-day raw transformation. So it's basically how to help you transition to a healthy vegan lifestyle, whether that is 100% raw or not, in order to be a healthy vegan, you want to eat as much raw as possible, right? So you don't have to eat 100%, but his book is really going to help you with every single base, like from the basics to the very 
details of what he does and what he's done in the last decade to transform his life. And so I recommend you get it in the next day. You have 35 hours, literally, till tomorrow at midnight. If you click the link in Matt's bio, you can get his book for less than $2. And this book is worth millions, honestly. If you're suffering or if you have a food addiction or if you need to lose weight or if you have a health issue or if you are um, suffering with depression or if you are dealing with any Thing that you really want to change I promise you Matt's book can help you if you get the information and you take the action steps that he lays out so um, click that because you're getting it for less than two dollars to change Matt <laughs> getting a resource like this for less than two dollars no it's <laughs> honestly the, before I got into bundles I, I kind of didn't really trust them and I was like what is that is it really <laughs> worth as much as they say it's worth but yeah. honestly, it really is. Um, you know, since be this is, I think, my fourth bundle that I've been in, and I'm truly, you know, honored to be a part of them because there's so many people that are putting out amazing content that, you know, people would be paying way more for. You know, as this one is over twenty-two hundred dollars, um, and you're getting it for forty-nine dollars, and like you said, that's under two dollars a book or something like that, or a course. You know, it. It's incredible. So if I would have had something like this when I started, you know, pretty much 11 years ago, it would have been, I mean, a, a game changer. So yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. Imagine how many mistakes we could have um, avoided. And okay, yeah. let's really wanna, I want to get to the topic at hand, but I actually, I want to ask you, what is one mistake that you did in the beginning of your journey or throughout your journey that you wish you would have known about or done differently? Yeah. So I actually just talked to Julia about this earlier this morning. And I think the two things that I really uh, could have done better in my early beginnings of this was, um, you know, eating too high in fat. You know, I was eating a, a lot of avocados um, and then also just not eating enough. So I didn't really quite understand the amount of food that I needed to eat um, to get enough calories. And then with, with what I was eating, I was just eating a little too much fat. And so over time, I learned to lower the fat, increase the volume of just fresh, low fat, raw fruits and vegetables. And that made a huge difference for me. So that really improved my energy levels, my sleep, um, you know, improved my skin for sure. You know, all these things, you know, once I got that fat down, which in the beginning, it's pretty easy to, to be pretty high fat. So you just got to learn how to do it and your course and my book and everybody else's is a perfect way to to get started with that i love it yeah same uh thing and i talk a lot about that in my course which by the way is also in the bundle guys click the link in matt's bio to check it out if you're watching on youtube i'll leave the links below um so those are the two mistakes and yeah those are really easy mistakes to make because nobody teaches us there's no manual uh yeah. there and now there is Matt's new book, A Transformation. But, you know, I didn't have a manual, and I know Matt didn't, and, and none of us were, were taught how to eat. We were taught how to put food in our mouth, but we weren't taught what kind of food and how to eat it, you know? So, like, fruit, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Yeah, these are all health foods, but having lots of nuts and then fruit is going to mess you up. So you got to know what to do, how to do it. And Matt's book is honestly life-changing. I truly... I consider it like the new 21st uh, century guide, you know, <laughs> Victoria. Yeah. Yeah. What's his name? Victoria yeah. Klavinskis. Victoria Klavinskis. Yeah. Yeah. Klavinskis. So, um, yeah, I very like, honestly, it's a, like an updated version and it's just so much information and so many recipes. The bundle has hundreds of brand new, all low fat, all oil free raw vegan recipes, which I would have literally paid thousands of dollars for. Um, because I was eating lots of fat because I thought that's the only way to enjoy. That's the only way, you know, but they're these genius chefs in this bundle are like changing the world with these recipes. So, okay, listen, I want to get to the topic at hand, but thank you guys for being here. Thank you so much. Um, I saw water is the way to unity is here. I would, I would change it to fruit is the way to unity, but you know, water's cool. I know yeah. Matt, um, you drink distilled water and you have an amazing distiller. And if anybody's 
interested in um, getting that, you can go to Matt's bio um, or just DM Matt because I think he'll send you a link to get like a discount on distillers because um, that's a very important part. And you talk about it in your book as well. Um, how long have you been drinking distilled water, by the way? Um, exclusively, I think close to four years now. So before that, it was off and on because my family actually had a distiller, you know, before I got one. And so I would have it when I was there and, and they love it. And, you know, I, I would really, you know, it, it makes such a big difference. The taste is, is much different. And to me, like when I started drinking distilled water exclusively, I, I remember just feeling like so much more enjoyment from drinking water. So I don't know if that was a placebo or if it was, you know, if it was just in my mind or what, but it, I, I think it's, it's really just both the peace of mind of knowing that you're getting out pretty much all of those, um, you know, endocrine disrupting chemicals and everything else that's added to water. Um, and then just, you know, probably because you're not getting that in your microbiome is, doing much better. So I think just overall, there's so many benefits to drinking distilled water. And that's, that's really why, why I love it so much. Yes. So Jan wants to know the name of the book. Listen, click the link in Matt's bio. His book is there and it's on sale until tomorrow at midnight. The name of his book is the 21 day raw transformation program. Correct? Yep. That's it. And you can get it for sale until tomorrow midnight. Okay. I have so many questions for you, Matt, but I swear I'll get to the topic at hand. So we're going to talk about the top. I wrote down eight reasons why people go back to eating dead animal body parts. And I want to get your opinion on these, if you agree, and what people can do about this. Cool. So, you ready? I'm ready. I wrote, oh, to, I wrote Matt, down. Matt, now everybody's asking about the water. I really <laughs> fucked up. I shouldn't have done that. But listen, guys. Um, Check out my YouTube. Yeah, go to Matt's page and his YouTube channel. He has lots of videos on water. Um, I really need to get into the distilled water because whether it's um, like, like you said, placebo or not, I don't feel like super comfortable with the water I'm drinking. And I think that's a really important thing. You need to be really confident and comfortable with everything you're consuming. So if you're not, then, then some, you know, you need to tweak something or adjust or find a new way. So I'm going to definitely check out as well okay so the number one reason that i wrote down uh that reason why people go back to eating dead animal body parts what's up frank we're talking about your friends here this live is dedicated to you your friends okay <laughs> so i wrote down top five you can you become the sum of the top five people you hang around and if you hang around people that support and buy dead animal body parts if you hang around five people that eat meat you won't be the sixth Matt, do you agree? What are your thoughts on this? Uh, 100%. That is a big reason why, uh, yeah, I believe that many people just can't make that full transition um, because, you know, one of my top reasons was they're, they don't have that full connection and they don't make that conscious shift um, because, one, yeah, because of who they're hanging out with. If you're hanging around people that are always – you know, talking down about plant-based or, you know, you don't have to be vegan. Animals don't, you know, they don't really suffer that much. You know, there's, there's tons of excuses that people come up with. Um, and so if you don't change your external environment, um, it's going to be very difficult to change your internal environment and that dialogue you have going with yourself. So, uh, yeah, I, I would 100% agree. I think, um, you, you really have to change the people that you're around um, to to get that full, um, you know, that full understanding of of the change that you're trying to make. Yeah, I completely agree. Now, I do want to say when I went vegan, I had no vegan friends. And so I, but I learned about this guy named Darren Hardy. He's the author of The Compound Effect. And in I think it's in that book where he talks about acquaintances and he got it from Jim Rohn. And basically you have um, uh, in-person acquaintances and then you have digital acquaintances or mentors. And so if you're listening to a lot of people that are vegan, that are healthy, if you're co constantly consuming content like that, that also counts as people you hang around, you know? I consider David Goggins a friend in my head because I'm always listening to him. I hang around yeah. him, 
he inspires me. But I also listen to people like Matt. I listen to people like, um, I love, um, honestly, I love older people. So yeah, I'm getting me too. Who, um, you know, uh, I love Arnold Errett. He didn't make YouTube videos though. Um, I'm, I'm blanking right now, but uh, listen, I listen to people that are vegan for life and yeah. um, finding plant-based solutions to their health issues. Now, Frank is here and I wanna read what he's gotta say because he, yeah. we should bring Frank on. It's not yeah. about a specific quantity of five people, it's who has the biggest influence. Typically that comes in numbers, but one inspiring person can influence the lives of hundreds, absolutely. Who feels strongest? You get changed or you change them. Uh, okay, Frank, I do agree, but most people are not that strong. Most people are not Aries, Frank. Okay, so calm down. That's <laughs> Number two, you know, we're meant to be part of a tribe. We're not meant to be alone, and we inherently want to fit in, even Aries, even me and you, Frank. We want to fit into the tribe. And so if your whole tribe is shit-talking vegans and talking about how you need to eat protein or you're going, you know, they knew someone that died or got really sick from being vegan, you're gonna, and you're hearing this all the time, it's going to influence you. Be careful who you hang around. Be careful who you hang around. And I'm talking to you too, Frank. You are susceptible. You become the sum of the top five people you hang around, whether you want to or not. You, get, you become uh, as healthy of, as they are, as rich as they are, as happy as they are, and um, as vegan as they are. So that's why I like to hang out with people like Matt. I know Matt is vegan for life. Would you uh, say that? You're vegan for life. Oh, no question. Yeah. yeah. I knew that. Once I, once I saw the movie Earthlings, I mean, and, and that's one of my big, um, you know, factors as well as to why people don't stay on this path. A lot of people just get into this for health and they don't truly make that connection with, you know, animal suffering and just really they're just uneducated about what it takes for the human body to be healthy. And so, you know, they, they don't watch things like Earthlings or Dominion or other, you know, um, mo documentaries that can really open their eyes and help them to make that deep connection with other, you know, sentient beings and their, you know, desire to love and, and just live their lives and, you know, all that sort of stuff. So when I saw the movie Earthlings, it completely, in one moment, it changed my soul. You know, it, it just like opened, it, it woke me up, really. It didn't, didn't necessarily change me. It just woke me up to who I really was and what I really cared about. And so having that connection with the animals and, and really understanding, you know, most of us have had family pets, dogs and cats that we, you know, would do anything for. And then, you know, once you realize every single other animal in, in nature is the exact same as those dogs and cats, you know, you realize that there's no excuse for, you know, causing death and suffering to them if you don't need to. So um yeah I, I just think that uh, making that connection is is a big piece to what keeps people um you know in adherence with with their ethical and moral beliefs i completely agree it yeah it it didn't you said it perfectly it didn't change you or me it kind of just like switched on the light switch of who we really are you know yeah. and i completely agree yes earthlings did it for um you too as well thank Thank you so much, uh, Parific. Yes. Okay. My number two thing that I wrote down is uh, fear. So one of the reasons why people go back to eating dead animal body parts, and let's call it what it is, guys. Okay. It's a dead animal's body part. It's not bacon. It's not a burger. It's a dead animal body part. I'm glad you agree, Alex. You're hired this year for Woodstock. You agree. Okay. Fear. Fear of health issues fear of not uh, being able to know like the truth, you know, fear of getting health issues or fear of just fear-based thinking. And I, I wrote down a lack of faith is fear. A lack of faith brings you fear. So when you don't have faith in the diet, when you don't have full confidence, and it's hard to, right, Matt, because we're not taught this as kids, we're not, um, raised vegan most of us and so we don't know if it really is healthy you know there's so much conflicting information my question to you matt is have you ever thought um maybe 
veganism isn't, maybe I do need to eat animal products. Have you ever thought this? Because I just want to say I have, I have thought this. I've, you know, I've been like, I'm not sure. I don't know many vegans long term. Uh, so have you ever had those thoughts? Um, you know, maybe, maybe before I watched Earthlings, uh, because even when I, I did start getting into this lifestyle and like learning about it, um, you know, I was still interested in things like raw milk and raw eggs. Um, you know, I still, that was still within my paradigm of what food was. Um, but then when I saw Earthlings and then I started seeing other documentaries and hearing, you know, other people on YouTube and things, um, and really doing the research and seeing that, you know, one, one thing that, um, now yeah, I'll, I'll finish my thought first, but yeah, it was, it was, um, you know, that sort of connection that really took that, those things like raw milk and raw eggs out of my paradigm of what food was. So I really redefined my, to myself what food was and I reinforced that belief with, you know, the research that I did, um, you know, look at all of the plant-based doctors who have been doing this for, you know, many, many decades. All of the plant-based doctors are thin, they're, or, you know, they're, they're a healthy weight. They are in their 70s, 80s, 90s, 100s. Um, but you don't see that with any of the other uh, diet, you know, segments. All of the other promoters, the doctors that promote these other like keto or paleo, they're all like middle, they're like 40 year olds, 50 year old doctors that, you know, are really just, I think, Personally, I think they're just trying to make a name for themselves. They're trying to make a paycheck, um, bring in some money. But you look at, so compare the, the age and the health of each of the long-term practitioners that promote each of these diets. Esselstyn, Campbell, uh, you know, uh, Barnard, well, all the, yeah. McDougal, all these guys are in their like 70s, 80s, you know, and Wareheim was over 100. So, I mean, name one paleo or keto doctor in that category, you won't do it. So you look at these examples that we have and you'll see that these guys are doing what, what we're doing and it shows that that is the optimal way to live. I mean, there's no question. We have enough examples at this point and, and enough science and enough, you know, personal experience. Even, okay, so even without all of what I just said, my personal experience is all that I really need because I know in my heart, like deep in my soul, I, could, I would never eat another person. I would never eat another being, you know? It just, that doesn't resonate with me. And to me, that is the only thing that I need to verify that that's what's true in my heart. That's what vibrates with my soul. That, so that's all that I need. I know for a fact that I don't need to eat an animal or their period or their milk to have health because one, I, I feel the best I've ever felt at this point after over a decade. And it's just what feels right in my heart. So that's, that's all that I need. Such a good point. Okay, so I... Personally, I am not friends or good friends with any non-vegans. And the reason why, I'm an, I am an asshole, but let me tell you the reason why, though. Because I wouldn't be friends with a serial killer, right? Would you be friends with a serial killer or a psychopath? I consider, like, I, listen, I wouldn't eat a human. I wouldn't kill a human. I'm not going to kill or support somebody killing an animal. And a lot of people give me hate for that. But the thing is, we're allowed to live the way we want to live. I don't want to have anyone in my life that knows about it, right, has watched the documentaries and still promotes and supports that industry. Now, Matt, what do you think about these psychopaths that watch Earthlings, that watch these videos and still eat animals? Because I have from some Instagram uh, people like that I used to follow that have seen all of the footage and now yeah. they're animals again. And how do you just, how can you, uh, how do you think about this? What do you think is going on there? 
Yeah, it's uh, it's really disturbing to me um, that, yeah. you know, it's one thing, I don't hold it against people that, you know, everybody has been brainwashed from childhood to believe that we need to eat animals, that we need protein and all, animal protein and all this stuff. Um, and to and to minimize animal suffering and to desensitize us to their suffering and make us think that they don't really have the same experience of life that we do. Um, so so the average person, I don't have any sort of animosity towards. I I still want to wake them up to the fact of you know what what is truth, but. Um, it, it is disturbing to me, the people that do watch Earthlings and that do make content and promote that they understand that and that they connect the dots and they have seen all the slaughterhouse footage and, you know, they they promote it to their audience that, that this is what they truly feel. And then they go, you know, a, a few months or a few years later, they're they're off eating grass fed, promoting grass fed beef and, and pasture raised eggs and all this BS. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, um, you know, there, there's a few things in my mind where that the only thing that makes sense to me is to, to how they could end up there. Uh, one is, you know, obviously this is the age of social media and there's a lot of chameleons out there. There's a lot of uh, people that are making you think one thing so that they can bring in more, more of an audience. And it's just, it's wannabe influencers or you know social media professionals that are riding the wave of of a trend, and, and veganism is is trending, and so people are jumping on this bandwagon to just bring in an audience, and then once they see another trend that's going to make them more money or get them more followers or you know whatever the case may be, um, they jump over to that, and then they start bashing veganism. And that even creates more because, you know, you know, bashing things usually gets you more viewers. Yes. And so, you know, I, I, that's that's probably the main thing that I see. And I, that's like the main justification that that I can just think up in my head. Um, but to turn your back on such a such a serious topic as, you know, taking taking somebody else's life for five minutes of of your sensual experience is uh it, it is disturbing to me and yeah i don't know what do you what do you think about all that yeah it is disturbing to think about i think for sure what you said they were never vegan they were writing a trend i wrote down um yeah money social media is not real that was one of the reasons why people go back to eating dead animal body parts social media yeah. is not real guys seriously we you have no idea if they were even vegan to begin with, I have met so many people at these different events and festivals that are com so different in real life, completely different than they are online. Um, and I've met some people that are exactly the same, like Lena from Pure Vegan Food. She's exactly mm -hmm. the same. She looks the same in person. She's so kind and nice. And you, the vi she's exactly the same, the same exact vibe in person. But I've met some people that I'm just like, wow, I can't believe that I like follow, like I just, I really liked you online, but in person, like not a good vibe and um, doesn't care about the lifestyle, just, just wants to make money online and you know, whatever. I also wrote down, I really truly believe that people can go back to eating dead animal body parts um, when they have people in their lives that are constantly convincing them, boyfriends, girlfriends, best friends, and they're hanging out with these people and they're listening to them. People are very susceptible to other people's opinion, especially when they are not um, convinced and they haven't raised their standard of living. So that's one of my other points. Um, some people, okay, so if you're not constantly thinking about something, it's gonna go in the back of your head, right? And me, I'm constantly thinking about how can I become healthier? How can I improve? And Sometimes people take that to a direction where it can be unhealthy. For example, trying to find the perfect diet or trying to you know, be the most pure, clean on the inside, removing all the mucoid plaque, uh, you know, all the stuff. 
And then they get to a point where like, there's nowhere else to go. They're not eating enough. They're barely eating. They're doing lots of cleanses. They're doing lots of fasting. And then they're just like, oh, I'm tired. This isn't working. It must be because I'm vegan. And so I know that you go into this a lot in your book about, do you talk about cleansing in your book, Matt? Uh, I do. I mean, one of the pillars in my book is detoxification um, because, you know, I got into this lifestyle through like Dr. Robert Morris and Dan McDonald, who are, you know, big pro proponents of detoxification. So I'm very familiar with that style of, of lifestyle. Um, and, and really, I think, you know, it's tough because I, I do think there are benefits, obviously. I mean, it helped me tremendously to go through that and to, you know, really understand how to support the body in its natural detoxification processes. And so I, I just think that people don't understand how to balance um, detoxification with a healthy, holistic um, lifestyle, you know, there's a difference between detox and the maintenance lifestyle that we both practice. Um, so, you know, it's like, I, I was just thinking of this the other day, how, you know, I have my traffic light system where you have the green light foods and the yellow light foods. So the green light are the core foods. That's like the foundation. That's the, the bulk of what you're going to eat. And then you have the yellow light foods, which is just the support if you ever need it, you know, if, if you don't have enough of your green life foods, you can use some of those yellow life foods to support you in getting, you know, to where you got to be. So that's like where our lifestyle that we both promote is the green light uh, lifestyle. And then the detox is the yellow light. And so if you ever need to do like a cleanse or whatever, if you're feeling like you're congested or whatever, you can use that whenever you need it to support your main lifestyle. But people get imbalanced with that and their, you know, the detox becomes the green light section and, and just their maintenance lifestyle becomes the, the yellow light. And so they have it flipped backwards mm -hmm. and they deplete themselves and they aren't eating enough. And they're just, that's why a lot of times they have low energy. They, you know, lose their periods or they're, you know, not just not doing well, whatever happens. Um, so, so I do think it is a useful tool when appropriate, um, but most people just need to learn how to eat a healthy, uh, you know, plant-based raw or high raw diet and then, you know, go from there. So, um, yeah, does that, does that answer your question? Yeah, that answers the question. I completely agree. I think there's a lot, I said this before, there's a lot of people <clears throat> with eating disorders most of us have eating disorders or disordered eating, however you want to say it. Um, again, we we're never taught how to eat. And I know right. that I definitely had an eating disorder and I'm still dealing with emotional eating um, because it was just a, such a big part of my life. And, um, you know, I was never taught how to deal with stress. I was never taught how to deal with boredom or loneliness or emotions that are uncomfortable. And most of us eat. And most of us eat junk. And um, when you have, like, you know, when you come to this lifestyle, you're like, oh, some people replace detoxing, you know, as the way to deal with stress or as the way to deal with uncomfortable emotions. And, you know, obviously it's a lot healthier, but it leads to under eating and constantly going on a juice cleanse or water fast is the number one thing that leads most people on social media to go back to eating dead animal body parts. You're not getting enough food. You're a human. You need calories. You need food for energy to survive. Now, we want to have the best food, right? Because in a world of good, better, and best, always choose the best. But a lot of people, they're dealing with issues that have nothing to do with food, right, Matt? Like, there's so many issues that we're dealing with. Food we're using as a tool, whether that's cleansing or detoxing or junk food, McDonald's, you know, we're using this as something that to help us. Uh, but it might be hurting us even if it's like, you know, juice cleansing. I have, I have multiple friends that I consider very close to me that are constantly going on juice cleanses and I'm constantly telling them this is not the way. And I know it's not the way, Matt, because they're going off the lifestyle, the green light foods, they're going off these, they're eating yeah. 
you know, junk food. They're eating, um, you know, cooked food that that doesn't serve them. Okay, and let's just talk about cooked food real quick because we're and we're about to um, end, guys. So if anybody has any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you, guys, all for being here. I really appreciate it. And um, Matt, do you in your book what are some healthy cooked foods that you recommend to people to help them transition to a healthy uh, vegan lifestyle? Yeah. Um, so again, going back to the, the traffic light system that I have in the book to help people kind of understand how to build healthy boundaries that give them a little bit of flexibility if they need it, uh, you know, in term in times of, um, you know, like here in Minnesota, November, December, it's pretty bleak as far as fruit goes. So I do sometimes use some yellow light foods to supplement my green light, you know, core foods. And so the yellow light foods are, are split into two. There's the higher fat um, raw foods, like the nuts and seeds and avocados. And then there's the cooked foods that you can use, which are still healthy whole plant foods. So it's definitely, you know, my book isn't a raw as law type program it's it's very flexible for people that you know it, it's got to be practical it has to be practical if people are going to stick with this and most people are in a place where they they either don't want to be 100 percent raw or they just don't have access to quality fruit and it's, and not, it's really not realistic yeah yeah it's just not realistic for them so that's why you use like you can use potato i mean really any of the staple whole cooked plant foods, rice, beans, potatoes, uh, lentils, uh, you know, things like that, that you can incorporate small amounts into your five-star salad, if you make a five-star salad at night. And that's one thing, that's a big thing that I always promote for people, if they are going to include cooked food, um, use it as, as a yellow light food, where it's just supporting your already raw salad for dinner. Um, you know, have a big salad for dinner and then put in maybe like a few potatoes, steam up some potatoes or some rice or some beans, add that into your salad. And that way you're still getting that fresh food along with your cooked food to help with the digestion, give you some more hydration, you know, get that raw fiber in there, uh, the enzymes and all, all that good stuff to help with the digestion of the cooked food. Because I know personally, if I were to eat just a like, mostly or all cooked meal, it would not digest well at all for me. But if I'm just going to add a little bit of cooked food in with my big raw salad, it's, you know, night and day. It's, it's, it works out, it digests just fine that way. So um, that's what I suggest for people to do is to stick with whole foods because that's where the health is at. You want to stick with whole foods and, and include it with like a big raw salad. And then, you know, you should be all set. I yeah I love it I completely agree it's not an all or nothing lifestyle I used to think that way Matt for about Me too. Six, yeah yeah for about six or seven years I thought raw is law there's a book by David Wolf um, called the um, nature's first law yeah yeah nature's first law and it ends every chapter ends with cooked food is poison yeah well a lot of raw food feels like poison in my body personally when I eat cacao I break out immediately. I can't sleep. My heart starts racing. It's a neurotoxin. It's, it's poison in my body. So and now I know that that's not true because if I eat some steamed kale, I sleep fine. I don't break out. You know, it's just if I put some steamed veggies in my salad, I feel so much better. So I know it's not all or nothing. And me and Matt's course are both um, uh, in this line of thinking, okay? I talk, yes, my course is called How to Be a Healthy Raw Vegan. But in it, I talk about, you know, the difference between uh, healthy cooked food and unhealthy raw food. And if you um, don't want to be 100% raw or you don't, you can't right now, you can absolutely be a healthy vegan for mm -hmm. sure. You don't need to be 100% raw. Um, but you want to eat as much living foods as possible if you want to feel alive. And that is why it's so simple, right, Matt? It's just like we yeah. want feel good, we've got to eat good food. We want to feel healthy, we've got to eat healthy food. So that's what this bundle is about, guys. It is over tomorrow at midnight. So please don't message us tomorrow at 12.01 a.m. asking for the link, please. You know, you just got paid. 
No, borrow the money, do what you can, because this, honestly, this course can change the trajectory of your life if you take the information and you start implementing it into your life. Um, last question. So I went through almost all, you said most of the things on my list. I had eight things. The last thing that, um, I mean, so top five people fear, afraid to be different or wrong. Uh, they never were vegan in the first place, not convinced that veganism is the truth, haven't raised their standard of living, um, follow the trends, which you said, and then money for money, social media is not real. So we pretty much said everything that I wrote down. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't think, is there anything else that you think why people would go back to eating dead animal body parts? Because it's not for health, because we have eaten that our entire lives. And that is what caused our health issues, guys. You're never, ever, ever going to find health by eating violence. Violence on your plate will never lead to a happy, healthy life, ever. Anything else that I missed, Matt? Uh, the, the only other thing that I wrote down was uh, being, usually when I see somebody that's like hyper-focused on aesthetics and like building, like getting as big of muscles as possible, um, you know, people that, that are really brainwashed by Hollywood as to what a, a healthy human looks like, um, you know, these unrealistically big bodybuilders that are, you know, that's what people think a healthy body looks like. And so, yeah, I, I was, um, I looked bigger in, when I would eat animal products and, and all that junk. Um, but I'm not any, str I wasn't any stronger then. I'm actually probably stronger now than I was back then. Um, I don't look as like plump and inflamed as I used to. So I don't probably look as muscular, but I still can lift more now than I could back then. And so that's one thing that I see people that are super fixated on their, their um, you know, weightlifting and things like that because they, they want to match the, the body image that Hollywood has given them to think that is what, you know, an attractive or a healthy person should look like. And so really just understanding what a true healthy body looks like is really important, I think, as well. Mm, so true. Yeah, that's one point that I did not think about, probably because you're a guy and it's more yeah. like protein, meat, you know, weightlifting. Um, I think there's, I would say there's more raw vegan women than men, right, in okay. general. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, I'm thinking about the bundle. I'm like, how many guys versus girls are there? Yeah, there's definitely more women because it's easier for us to um, like, not worry about muscles and protein and stuff like that. But what you said is completely true. And also, um, all of those bodybuilders, they have severe health issues when in their 30s, 40s, 50s. Arnold Schwarzenegger had like three heart attacks before he went yeah. vegan, right? So yeah. it's all about prevention. You know, me and Matt are in the prevention business, guys. We are trying to prevent you from having these completely preventable diseases, cancer, uh, heart issues, uh, diabetes, stroke. All of these things can be prevented if you take the actions now. And it might be hard to change now, right? Because it's not easy to change. But if you live, if you do something hard now, you will have an easier future. If you just keep doing easy things now, you will have a hard future. Um, that's just the law of the universe. That's not me like coming up with that. So uh, it's two o'clock. I have another live. I could talk to you all day, Matt. Thank you so, like so much for being here. Thank you so much. And everybody, go get the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle with, with Matt's new program and my new course, How to Be a Healthy Vegan. Both of our stuff is less than $2 um, until tomorrow at midnight. And then my course is going to be $99, I decided, because I'm getting such good feedback. Um, and Matt, do you know how much your course you're going to offer it for or your program? Uh, I think $39.99 is going to be the price. Yeah, so guys, for $10 more, you can get 36 other courses on how to grow your own food, yoga programs, menopause. Um, there's a vegan entrepreneur course in there. There's so much. Just go check it out. You don't have to buy it. Just check it out in Matt's link below. If you're watching on YouTube, go to his bio on Instagram. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate um, it. Bye.
All right. See ya.